Africa is growing. Jazeera is calling. Good morning, everyone, uh, and a warm welcome to the launch of uh, the Jasiri Growth uh, Accelerator. Um, I'd like to recognize all of you who joined us today, uh, representatives from uh, government institutions with all protocol observed. Uh, I'd like to recognize our speakers for today, uh, Esther Nghunda, who is the Director General of Innovation and Emerging Technologies at the Ministry of ICT and Innovation, and Stephen Gugu, who is the co-founder and director of Victoria Ventures and the Victoria Business Angels uh, Network. I'd like to recognize uh, the various entrepreneurship support organizations and all the entrepreneurs. Thank you all so much for joining uh, today's uh, launch of the Jasiri Growth Accelerator. We're delighted to have you. Um, our program uh, lead, Sandra Sfiri, will take us through uh, the Growth Accelerator program shortly, as well as the details uh, of today's agenda. So about a year and a half ago, uh, we launched the Jasiri uh, Talent Investor Program uh, in Rwanda and Kenya. And as many of you know, uh, the approach that we use uh, in the talent investor is to select highly entrepreneurial and exceptional individuals who are driven and committed uh, to become entrepreneurs and, and launch high growth ventures. And we, we selected our first cohort uh, of Jasiri Fellows last year, and, and they uh, together co-founded nine ventures. So they're now busy working hard uh, to build businesses that are solving difficult problems and providing goods and services that are accessible to a large number of people. And uh, these are referred to as market creating innovations. We are also uh, in the final stage of selecting uh, candidates for the second cohort uh, of the talent uh, investor. And we will announce selected candidates in the second week of May. So many of you who are present on this call have been part of this journey uh, uh, with us of launching the Talent Investor, introducing the program in your respective networks and recommending candidates. And we'd like to take this opportunity to recognize and, and appreciate and extend our sincere gratitude uh, to all of you for being part uh, of our journey of, of launching the Talent Investor. So today marks another uh, milestone for us as we launch the second stream of Jasiri. Uh, and this is the Growth Accelerator. And so we're excited to celebrate this important milestone with you. Uh, we, work, we look forward to working alongside uh, all of you in introducing uh, the Growth Accelerator to the existing startups uh, in, in Kenya and Rwanda. And so the, the accelerator will invite eligible startups, uh, ventures uh, from the talent investor and those uh, within our ecosystems. And we seek to accelerate the growth and, and, and the scale uh, of these existing startups and market creating with market creating innovations. And we look forward to seeing the growing and collective uh, impact of these businesses and their contribution uh, to the development of our society. So thank you all so much for uh, joining the launch of the Jasiri Growth uh, Accelerator. And kindly allow me to now invite uh, our CEO, Anthony Farr, uh, to share a few words uh, in opening this event. Anthony, over to you. Thank you very much, Aline. Um, as you mentioned, this is a, a, a very exciting moment for us as uh, we round out the, the offering uh, that was always envisaged uh, for our work in, in East Africa to, to take um, the Jasiri Talent Investor into the next phase, uh, the next milestone of the entrepreneurial journey uh, into this, this growth accelerator offering. Uh, and we're excited largely because you know, the, the, there's this growing interest and excitement about businesses that are, are actually solving important and difficult problems uh, on the African continent. Uh, but those businesses aren't easy to support. They need a, a level of, uh, of customization uh, and, and a level of intentionality to make sure that those particular types of businesses can succeed. 
And that's really how we've designed and positioned uh, the Jasiri Growth Accelerator is really to address the specific challenges that face uh, those so-called market creating innovations. Uh, so we're excited to, to bring that to the ecosystem. Uh, we're excited to bring our, our patient capital, uh, our history of, of working in the African entrepreneurial ecosystem for the last 15 years uh, and bring that all to bear uh, in this offering of, of the Jasiri uh, Growth Accelerator. Uh, we, we reflect a lot on the fact that, uh, that entrepreneurial ecosystems are, are, are complex uh, uh, systems uh, and we need to, to think about how, how we respond in, in, in a complicated uh, and complex environment. And, and part of the, the essence and, and understanding of, of working in that environment is that at the center, it's all about relationships. Uh, you know, when you're wor wor working in a complex uh, ecosystem like, like the one that we are, uh, no one organization, no one entity can, can do it on their own. They, they are totally reliant on working together with relationships. Uh, and, and that's the only way that we can succeed as an overall entrepreneurial ecosystem. And so we're very excited at the depth and the quality uh, of the relationships uh, that, that make this Jasiri Growth Accelerator possible. And we really want to thank all our partners um, for, for engaging with us on, on this next stage of the journey. Uh, and we can't wait to see what happens as we take it forward. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Anthony. Thank you very much, Aline. And thank you to everybody. Welcome to the launch of the Growth Accelerator. Type one in the chat box if you are excited about this. Type one. Excellent. Awesome, 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 awesome. Good to see. Wait, now we're going to get into a panel uh, discussion, a short panel discussion with our special guests today. We have two special guests. Um, these are, the first one is Esther Kunda. She is the Director General in the Ministry of ICT and innovation for the government of Rwanda. So she is an amazing um, leader herself. It's been uh, in, the, in amazing programs like the next Einstein Forum and uh, being to Carnegie Mellon University. So uh, again, a big hand for Esther, please. And then our next panelist is Stephen Google. Stephen is, is, a, is an angel investor. He's a director at Victoria Ventures. He invests in early stage startups. He's consulted widely over 400 um, entrepreneurs around the world. And um, he's actually a, a lecturer at the University of at Strathmore Business School, as well as um, uh, Fleric Business School in Belgium. So he's, um, he's, a, a, he's an incredible person to have here. He's well versed in the entrepreneurship ecosystem in Kenya. So a big hand for Stephen. So big welcome to my, pan, my, my panelists and I'll go straight into the question. I'll start with, um, with you, Esther. Um, just, Esther, tell us about the Rwanda Ministry City and innovation support for startups, particularly your strategies on promoting innovation and techn technology testing. Uh, thank you, Sandra, and, and, and thank you to the whole team for really having me here today. Um, first, I'm very excited to see this next step into the Jassir programs. I hope you can hear me well. Um, fantastic. So um, just to quickly answer your question, um, I recently joined the ministry, so it's been uh, uh, slightly more than a year, and, um, but I've been in the, in the ecosystem or the tech ecosystem for almost 10 years now. So, so I've seen um, the growth that we've had and, and the different programs that, um, that we've been doing. 
So, and and one of the key areas that um, uh, that we are looking at now first is is our vision to become um, an ICT hub in Africa, and I think this is a vision that we we share with um, a few other countries across the continent. But then the other the other element we add on is because of our particularity of being a very small country. Um, it, it, it landlocked, um, but also with a with um, not a very big population, we want to be a proof of concept strategy. So what we mean by that is, um, you think about an idea from anywhere in the world. Think about Rwanda as your test bed and your launch bed to really find out what is your product market fit. Um, is there is if this innovation is not does not exist anywhere in the world. Um, how can you easily collaborate with government to understand and find out um, what particular regulatory environment that can be built around a similar your product or similar products? Because as you scale and expand, um, usually that's the first uh, roadblock to, to scaling up across the continent. What is the regulatory environment around new innovations? So for us, this is a strategy to be a launch um, and test bed across the country for, for innovation across, from across the world, and especially hopefully for random entrepreneurs. So some of the key activities that we're really focusing on, um, there's providing as much resources and um, innovation programs as possible. So what you're doing as just Siri in terms of nurturing talents, but also for us looking at um, fab labs um, and innovation hubs now expanding across the country. So we're trying to set up different innovation hubs in other secondary cities because innovation comes from everywhere. It's not only the capital city, so but it has to come from, from everywhere else. So we were trying to expand that reach um, and do that. But I think at a regulatory uh, level, what we are looking forward to is to to really look at incentives for startups, um, but also to attract investment. So I think uh, most people would have seen um, the new investment law, different laws that are um, the changes in the company law, um, etc. And we are also working on our own tech enabled innovation policy and the Startup Act to substantiate that. What we are also looking at forward to is seeing as many investors um, coming into the market um, and, um, and, 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 and as the government, we've put together the Rwanda Innovation Fund, which um, really provides um, that seed, um, seed capital for companies, um, for startups that are, that are growing. And this is um, an investment that the government of Rwanda has done so that we can also see how as a other partners or other ecosystem leaders can, uh, can also join into into that venture so there's so many aspects to this um i don't think all the programs we can we can touch base around it but at a high level it's um there's a lot of work happening around um making sure that the regulatory environment is very good attracting investment um but also expanding the innovation programs uh whether it's incubation accelerators um, that are supporting innovators. Thank you. Great. Thank you very much. And Stephen, for you, what are the exciting opportunities in East Africa and particularly Kenya? And you could also touch on some of the, the things that you've done as the Victoria Ventures. Uh, thank you, uh, Sandra, uh, for inviting me, first of all, for the session and for the questions. Uh, first of all, really excited uh, in terms of what Jasiri is doing, the launch of the accelerator, because I think we do need lots of accelerators, uh, properly structured, uh, and that have the right team members to run them. I um, mean, if you look at some of the successes in the startup ecosystems uh, across the world, like in Silicon Valley, uh, a significant chunk can be attributed to sort of like, you know, the likes of YC uh, and what they've been able to do. So really excited and uh, looking forward to see how things are going to uh, play out. Um, just to respond uh, to your question, so, uh, you know, the question of what are some exciting uh, spaces uh, for startups to found or, like, I, I, I'm talking about that question from two perspectives. Uh, the first perspective is that there is what investors generally tend to like, yeah? and uh, there you can speak about your fintech, your health techs, your logistics, etc, etc, uh, and where there's a lot of money that has been flowing in. 
Uh, and you can see that yes, uh, investors love those sectors for specific reasons, because there's a lot of opportunity uh, for growth. Uh, there's a lot of opportunity in terms of sort of like connecting consumers uh, to markets in this case. Uh, and those remain very exciting. But I think uh, as an entrepreneur at times, uh, it's not good to get lost in the hype of the bigger picture, the macro, because you're always sort of like working from the bottom up, right? And so it's, you'll find opportunities in very obscure spaces. Uh, and the reason I say that is uh, as an angel network at Victoria, uh, every other day we receive uh, deals from, you know, uh, different entrepreneurs. And at times I'm, I'm fascinated by the number of problems that entrepreneurs can discover <laughs> or the number of problems that entrepreneurs can solve. You know, things that I never even thought were problems at times come up and I'm just like, yeah, that's actually a really good problem to solve. Uh, and I'm so fascinated. And they're not necessarily in the spaces that uh, someone would say that this is the space I should be looking at. I mean, I've seen startups in the media space who are doing some really uh, cool stuff. Uh, I mean, there's a nice startup we're talking to called uh, Shahara. And I, I thought it was very fascinating because they're trying to create a marketplace. Uh, typically, if you're a content creator, you have to sell your, when you, when you want to sort of like market your products, you have to go to Apple, you have to go to YouTube and so forth. Uh, but they're trying to create something local that uh, ensures that the creator gets as much revenue as possible. Right. Uh, and that's not something that if you sort of like started from the macro, you wouldn't find that as an opportunity that someone should focus on. But yet it's a very big problem for content creators. And for as much as uh, people are willing to pay for it and people are willing to, uh, you know, uh, to connect with that, then it is a problem that needs to be solved. So I would say, yes, take the top bottom approach and there's typical sectors that everybody talks to and you can go online, you can see where the funding is flowing into. But also very importantly, just discover problems where people have a big problem uh, you have a solution and the market is willing to pay for that. Um, and then you sort of like uh, also asked about Victoria. And uh, as Victoria, we've been around for the last uh, five years. And during those five years, we invested in uh, nine uh, different transactions. Uh, combined value, we put uh, around a million dollars in those different transactions. And the good thing is we've seen a lot of growth because those companies have gone on to raise over $15 million uh, during that time. Uh, and so to that extent, we're very proud in terms of uh, how that's going. Uh, we've not had uh, clear exits yet. So you can argue that uh, we have a lot of paper profits, so to say, uh, but you're looking forward to a point where angels can celebrate some of the gains uh, out of the startups they've been able to make investments into. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much. That's really, really uh, amazing. And we are excited as Jasiri to launch this accelerator so we don't get, so that we get some of our best entrepreneurs coming to us instead of going to YC. So this is so cool. Right? And, um, and another question for you, Esther, when entrepreneurs are dealing with policymakers, with governments, what advice would you give, would you give them or what mistakes do you see that they usually make? Mm. Um. So as, as, as someone who, ha, who, was in the, who was an entrepreneur in my previous life, um, I think um, my first advice, and depending on, uh, also based on where I'm sitting today, um, I always say the, the first mandate of the entrepreneur is to really um, work um, for the, to solve the problem they're actually working on. So, um, really working for their startup. Um, in terms of engagement with, with um, regulators and government stakeholders and all that, at a high level um, on priorities, I think it should start with what are the key um, policies um, or regulations that really concern your business. Um, and here I'm talking about like a 360 view around uh, your business. This is, um, let me start simply with drones. Um, if you're a drone company, you have to, you have to really be very keen to understand what are the transport laws in, in the country? What are the export, if you're manufacturing or assembling drones, what are the export import um, laws around your country? And the point of contact, especially for us who are in the tech ecosystem, regulators do not stop at the, 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 the organizations that are on, in charge of ICT and technology. It's all the other, um, all the other um, government, of, government institutions because they also deal with things that are going to be affecting, affecting you. 
um, being very aware as a founder of what are the labor laws in your country, what are the tax laws in your countries, being very familiar and comfortable with um, really talking to the tax man and all that. So that at the end of the day, if there's something that is hindering um, your growth or your community's growth, then the, any concern is actually addressed to the right people that is um, that is able to quickly solve it. So I think for me, um, for me, it's. Um, I think a few years back, um, most of most of us we were very wrapped into um, government would have to. But then this is also a personal opinion that government is going to handhold entrepreneurs into succeeding. Um, but at the end of the day, for me, um, how I look at it is. Um, is you're an entrepreneur and the regulations that are there either should support you, but then also there might be easier ways to to work with them um, and the regulators that that regulate you. So I think the first thing is really be aware of who's regulating you, what are they regulating you on, um, and when you get in the room to advocate for yourself. You have to be knowledgeable about um, about those laws um, and etc. And maybe um, uh, maybe this is also something that um, different programs can also continue working on around this uh, building this knowledge and having resources and even government really making an effort to to advertise and be more vocal and out there in terms of what are the regulations and communicating them. Um, and engaging with the ecosystem. But um, from the entrepreneur uh, side of thing, I think that is also a learning curve that uh, people just have to be very comfortable with. Uh, it's, it's a very hard one, but you can't mm. go out with it. Absolutely. The, the regulator, the government, their role really is to facilitate, to help and to, to regulate, making sure that your, working, your work doesn't destroy or hurt other members of society. And so that's really good to see it that way. And um, I, I see that the, the government of Rwanda is doing a great job there. And, and question for you, uh, Stephen. So invest, I mean, entrepreneurs usually come to, um, to, to different forums or activities or accelerators. And they wonder sometimes that, is it true that investors have got money and they try to pitch and they're not very sure what to do. So it, according to you, what are the mistakes that you see founders make when they are talking to investors? And what do investors like you, Victoria Ventures, look for in a startup? Um, uh, thanks. Uh, and maybe just to clarify, so we have two, we have the Victoria Business Angels Network, and then we have Victoria Ventures, which is a manager of the Victoria Business Angels Network. Those are two. Um, but, uh, you know, I like uh, something that uh, Esther said uh, in terms of, you know, starting with the basics, right? Getting the basics right, uh, understanding your labor laws, uh, getting your regulation right, uh, if you're operating in a particular space. I think there are those obvious things that uh, they're very important for you as a founder and not even so much for investors. I think just for the sustainability of your business, making sure that you're not, you're not building on quicksand, uh, that you're sort of like building a proper organization. I think... Um, it's important that you mention, you know, the, the news that we've seen coming out of uh, Flutterwave. I know there's quite a bit of allegations that are coming out, uh, but you want to make sure that as you're building, you know, like corporate governance, some of those things are very important just to make sure that there's proper structures uh, in the company is moving along, right? But for me, the biggest, uh, I don't know, mistake or oversight that I see with entrepreneurs is where at times I don't think all entrepreneurs have realized that uh, the venture capital space is almost like a game, right? And you have to optimize for two things. Uh, one thing you have to optimize for is that you're building a, a good business that can stand on its own feet uh, if all the investors don't show up. Uh, but then you also have to optimize for the venture capital game, uh, which is, you know, you have to raise money. And to raise money, you need to tell a particular story that is going to be backed by certain uh, metrics, certain numbers and so forth. And so at any one point as an entrepreneur, you can get caught up in building a very good business and forget about the metrics, or you get very caught up in building the metrics and forget about the business. And I guess the challenge is just to build those two aspects consistently uh, because you do need to raise money, but you're not guaranteed of raising money. And that's why you need to build a fundamentally uh, strong business 
uh, as you move along, right? So for me, I think that, that's a big one that I would just throw like, uh, uh, I would just uh, mention that uh, if you're getting started now, it become very competitive. You, you know, funders, even our angel investors today, they're not only looking at deals locally, they're looking for, at deals across uh, the continent. So from that perspective, you're competing with literally anybody across the continent who can show, you know, these are metrics in the last sort of like uh, six months, the last one year, we're raising at this uh, amount and so forth, you know. So play, remember that you're playing a game and you also have to optimize both sides. Uh, I'm going to stop there. Fantastic. You're absolutely right. We see that, that there are certain entrepreneurs who are building then the others who are just uh celebrateurs right like winner of this we know that but they're not building the company <laughs> and um lastly in closing what advice would you have for 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 startup founders just like very quickly what advice would you have for startup founders in um east africa and africa i'll start with it will be the same question but i'll start with you um i'll start with with you esther um, thank you. Um, I, I think um, my my few um, my few comments for especially for East Africa. One, um, we now have a really open market, so built for all of us, um, built for all of us. Um, and then uh, second, I think we are at that exciting moment where um, we're we're going we're seeing a bit of good tractions uh, in terms of. Um, in terms of what we call startups and the 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 value we are attaching to the value the the market is attaching to startups, so I I would really encourage them and um, encourage encourage every entrepreneur to really be um, I'd say good luck in building a good company work to build a good company um at the end of the day and i think there's there's plenty of support available now um for you to be able to do so and see and, and really try to get um help from from the ecosystem great thank you steven the same question what advice do you have? i think uh, esther took the words right out of my mouth like this idea that uh, you know east africa is bigger now the east african community we just added uh, DRC into East Africa. Uh, I've not done the numbers, but I think we're probably now are rivaling Nigeria in terms of uh, size of uh, population, size of economy and so forth. So I think we need to build for that. And of course, also build for the continent. Uh, and I think just having that bigger vision as you're building is such an important thing because alone as a country, uh, if you're building for your country or, uh, only, it's going to get tough to sort of like attract new investors and so forth. And I guess the, the, the last one for me is more personal. Uh, and it's just this point that it's a tough journey, right? Being an entrepreneur is not easy. Please get your support system right. Uh, you know, at times, uh, entrepreneurs, they, 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 you know, they come for this kind of session or they go for a pitch session and everybody claps and then they go back and they have to deal with their problems, you know, cash flow problems, employee issues, etc., etc. So please make, get a good support system that you can sort of like work with when uh, they're going and stuff and so forth. Uh, thank you. Excellent, excellent. This has really been amazing. Um, type one in the chat box, everybody, for Stephen and Esther. Thank you very much for, for, for giving us such insights in such a short space of time. Thank you, Stephen, and thank you, Esther. We will be calling on you, actually, all the time to come and speak to the entrepreneurs because we, what you're saying is exactly what we believe as well, and then you know so much about your areas and also your ecosystem so thank you very much thank you so much sandra thank you for the invite great thank you very much thank you thank you thank you um type one word in the chat box like your key takeaway from the conversation we just had with esther and steven type your one word in the chat Awesome. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, now I'm going to talk about the Jasiri Growth Accelerator. So the Growth Accelerator uh, that we're launching today is, a, is meant for, for startups and it's a program that's designed to help early stage startups to 
hit key milestones that make them investable. So we are focusing very much on growth. And so uh, looking at what we, we what will be contained in the program is that it's not it's um, it's not school, it's not uh, curriculum per se, but we are looking at every business that's coming in. We, we're going to give them personalized support. So we look at your your business in the, the eleven areas where we're talking about your problem solution, your market sizing, your product and value, uh, your growth strategy, market creating innovations, like your growth tools, your team strategy, sales, marketing, revenue, and fundraising. And these areas will help us see where you need the most help. And um, for our accelerator, our main focus is on market creating innovation. So in other words, for those companies that are solving difficult problems that impact millions of people. Then at the end of the, the, the accelerator, which will run for three months, we are going to have a demo day. At this demo day, the companies that have hit key milestones get to pitch to Jasiri and other investors. And the ones that meet the uh, Jasiri criteria will get an investment of $75 thousand dollars and we would also then um, encourage other investors to co-invest and you get um, additional investment at the end of the program but then the, the companies that go through the accelerator will still continue to be part of our alumni group uh, the post accelerator program both the ones that have raised investment and the ones that have not will continue to just be part of the, 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 the post accelerator where we, they will receive an additional nine months of growth monitoring and support. And during that period, they can still get to, 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 be, uh, to be introduced to, uh, to investors and they get to pitch. And the ones that have made progress will also help out um, as mentors and guides in the program because we are creating a powerful network of super supportive founders who are helping each other to, to grow big businesses. Who is the Jasiri Growth Accelerator for? So we are looking at companies that are in the early stage. Um, they are registered in Kenya and or Rwanda. They've got a large market, uh, potential market. And then they are creating uh, market, they are working on market creating innovations. These are uh, solving difficult problems. And um, I mean, difficult problems that affect millions of people. Then they have an existing user base. And we're looking at companies, not, not the, they've got an existing user base, as well as they've got revenue. So we're not looking at um, the ones that are pre-seed, well, I mean, pre uh, pre-revenue, pre looking at the ones that have actually generated revenue in this case. Now, talking very briefly about market creating innovation, we're looking at it in terms of there's some innovation that, um, that, that sustains, so sustaining innovation is the one that just helps the business to sell more of the same thing. So you've got one version of a phone, then you release a new version of it that's sustaining or cars the car manufacturers will create different versions of the car that's sustaining innovation. Then there's also efficiency innovation, which releases cash flows uh, by making your processes more efficient. For instance, when you, uh, you, you had people doing things manually and then now you automate and you have robots, that reduces the cost of getting things done. But the downside of those is that people lose jobs. Then the one that we're focusing on, which is market creating innovation, is where you're solving problems that have not been solved before in the same way. So a combination of some, it could be some old methods solving new problems or, or new problems solving old problems or a combination. And in the process, you get to create new markets and new businesses and new way of doing things. And like Anthony, our CEO mentioned, as Jasiri, we have patient capital to support you through this stage where you, your business might not be ready for traditional investors because it might take you too long to get to a point where 
you actually hit the, the metrics that might be required by uh, traditional VCs and angels. Our investment structure is we are going to invest 25,000, I mean, $75,000 in businesses that meet our criteria at the end of the accelerator. And our aim really is to remain a minor shareholder, making sure that you as the founders, you are incentivized to keep running your business as you get further investment, but you still have um, a, a major stake in your business. That's what we are aiming for as just Siri. Uh, looking at the process to, to apply, you go to our website, justsiri.org, um, you will complete a quiz and you, you after the, the quiz is the eligibility, it's a short eligibility quiz with uh, four questions just to help you know if you are eligible to continue with the whole application process or not. And then we will have virtual information sessions to give you further information on the accelerator, some of the information like the information we're giving you now. Uh, we will submit the application. Then we'll, if you're shortlisted, you get to attend an interview where you pitch to us, we listen to your, to, to your vision, what you're working on. And then we announce the people that are getting into the accelerator. And we'll run the accelerator for three months. We're, and we will close the applications and reopen for the next cohort after the three months. So to apply, uh, visit jasiri.org. And um, for more information, you can look at our different social media accounts. So um, thank you very much. Now we'll get to questions. If there are any questions for about the accelerator or questions directed to um, Esther and or Stephen. Great. So if there are any questions, you can type the questions in the chat box and then I'll ask the, my, the, the Jasiri team to look out for any questions that need to be answered. Okay, I see there's a question from Lawrence, Larry. How many businesses just are you looking at funding within every accelerator? Um, we are looking to fund as many as possible, okay? But we, are, we have the target of seven, but I think the major part is more of, can we get seven, can we get more? So we'd like to, to, to fund as many businesses as possible. Another question from here, Patrick, should businesses first pass through the talent investor in order to attend the accelerator? Um, the answer is no. That's the good news, Muhire, uh, Patrick, that you can join the accelerator straight if you've got, uh, if you've got, if you've got an ex existing business. So the businesses that have already gone through the talent investor can apply to join the accelerator and the external businesses can apply directly. Another question from Claire. Are you looking at very at specific verticals industries? No, actually, we are more interested in whether you're solving um, a problem that impacts a lot of people and looking at how you're solving it. And so it could be it can be in any industry, any vector. And I think you just I'll have to confirm, but a lot of investors just don't invest in, uh, in, 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 in certain industries that are like damaging to the environment or damaging to people. So it would be like tobacco and, you know, like extractives and all of that. But that depends on the different uh, investors. Yeah. 
Bingad Zapapi, 75,000 US dollars. How many shares do you take? So that's a conversation. It's, uh, it really varies. It will be between 3.75% to 7.5%, but depending on the value of your business. But that's the conversation we can have uh, uh, during that stage of investment. Jimmy Mugambo is asking, does the founder's age matter for the accelerated program? No, actually, it does not matter. So we are looking for, so you could be any age, but we are looking for teams. You cannot be a solo founder. You, I mean, you cannot be a solopreneur. So you could be a solo founder with a team, that's fine, but you cannot just be a, a one-man band and we will, yeah, we will not take in uh, people just working alone. Oh, another question from Kev is, assume they're selected initially, can a business move from the talent investor program to accelerator? Yes, Kev. Cool, you, you, you sound like you applied to the talent investor. Cool, yes, you can. So you can move from the talent investor into the accelerator, definitely. Tony is asking, do you have success stories from previous cohorts? I'll ask um, my team to jump in here. We do have success stories. Um, anybody to just jump in and give some of the success stories that we've got. Aline and Oroz. Uh, thank you, Sandra. And uh, in responding to this question, I mean, we're launching the accelerator now, so we will be and recruiting for the very first cohorts. And as Sandra alluded to, we will have a number of cohorts. It will be cohort-based, uh, about three cohorts a year. And so we look forward to the success stories. But this being said, uh, as I uh, alluded to in opening uh, this, this event, this uh, launch event, um, last year we uh, launched uh, the other stream of Jasiri, uh, which uh, you know as the talent investor. And we recruited uh, our first cohort for the talent investor. And uh, from the 39 uh, individuals that were initially selected, about 25 founded uh, nine ventures. And the stage they are at now is, you know, they, they're busy uh, working on their ventures uh, reaching uh, product market feeds and, um, you know, generating revenues. And as Sandra's uh, alluded to, this growth accelerator will be open to ventures from the talent investor as well as uh, other uh, startups within our entrepreneurship community. Great. Indeed. And just adding to what um, Aline has mentioned, we as the Allen and Jill Gray Philanthropies ha, are not only operating in East Africa, but for a number of years have been operating in Southern Africa. And we've supported a number of entrepreneurs uh, in big numbers um, over many years. Very pleased to let you know that one of Africa's first unicorn is a venture that we supported in one way or another. So we have many success stories. Please come for, to our info sessions and we'll give you more details about that. Thanks. Fantastic. Thank you. Um, there's another question from Jimmy Mugambo. It says, is the $75,000 a cash investment? Is it for the one company or selected company who share the investment? So the, the investment is into a company yes it's it's money that's given to the company and um so as just series something that we have done which is different from a lot of accelerators is that we are just looking at the investment that you receive and not counting the support and everything else than the other resources and tools that we give you so you do get some accelerators where we say people will say we're going to give you 75,000. And then at the end, they say the 75,000 was given in mentorship. And <laughs> you know, so this is real investment. And we make sure that we also 
encourage other investors to come on board. So if we're now counting, including the support and resources that you just get from Jasiri, it goes way beyond $75,000. Then the other good thing that we've got is that we are, the accelerator is practical. So it's designed for busy entrepreneurs who are busy building great companies. Like Steven said, uh, we find that there is a the entrepreneur struggle. There, there are great entrepreneurs who are busy and they don't know how to raise money. And like he said, it's actually like a game. It's a, it's a different language. It's a different way of doing it. If you're used to playing uh, basketball and then you go into football, football seems unfair. Saying, but uh, like, uh, why can't I touch the ball, right? And then if you don't understand the rules, it looks like, why is it that the other guy can touch the ball? And they tell you that that's the goalkeeper. Like, but why, you know, like, how does this all work? So there are people who have learned to raise lots of money and they keep doing that. And so we want to make sure that all of the people that get into Accelerator learn how to raise and build great companies as well at the same time. Great. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much, everybody. Uh, we encourage you to apply and to share the news uh, because we are looking for great founders who are building great companies that solve millions of people's problems across the continent. And um, visit jasiri.org for that. And if you've got questions, just reach out to us. We'll guide you through the process as well and answering any questions. And we also encourage you to, to share the news. So thank you. And for, for, for me, uh, before I hand over to, to, to Rose, I'd like to thank everybody on the Jasiri team. Thank you to the directors, the project managers, the team, the comms, uh, the accelerator team, and the whole organizations for making this possible. Thank you very much. And thanks to Ant and Dan and everybody. So thank you. I will hand over to Dr. Rose. Thank you very much indeed, Sandras. What an amazing launch, what an exciting session we're having today. Ladies and gentlemen, before we give you our closing remarks, we are very honored also to be joined by Noreen Ntiga. She is the um, program director at the Office of the Presidency, Small and uh, Micro Enterprise Advisory, and a wonderful um, supporter of Jasiri. We have seen their support in the Jasiri Talent Investor, and now they join us also in supporting us in the Jasiri Growth Accelerator. I would like to welcome you, Madam Noreen. Please unmute and address us for about two minutes. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Rose. As Dr. Rose mentioned, my name is Noreen Bega from the SME Advisory Unit, uh, whereby I head the programs and operations for the unit. The SME Advisory Unit is a department that is housed within the Executive Office of the President here in Kenya, whereby we look at matters SME, how do we elevate SMEs and how do we support growth for SMEs. We've been working closely with uh, Jasiri um, since we met them. And we, you know, we are very proud of the work that you're doing. My team members are also on the call today and I know you've been working closely with Faith and Grayson. Um, just to witness this and you know, we are very, very proud um, for the launch of the, uh, for the launch of the Jasiri Growth Accelerator. Whereby we look, uh, as the panelists have mentioned, we're also looking closely to see what will be the outputs um, and the impact that will be created, because definitely even today as we stand, we know it will definitely be positive. The startup ecosystem is, is very intrinsic. It's very sensitive um, in that, that, you know, the support is there, but how do the entrepreneurs tap in? How do they make sure they benefit? Um, and most governments, you know, like Kenya, for example, we're putting the correct regulatory environment to support these startups, um, trying to understand how is it that we can grow them, you know, just to make sure that then they can move to the level of being a high growth entrepreneur to be able to exist longer than the three years, whereby, you know, it's, it's said that businesses uh, normally undergo their death uh, within the second or third birthday. But 
if supported when they're that young, then definitely you see this business definitely growing to become a high growth uh, business. So we definitely look forward to seeing, we'll be learning as the SME advisory unit, we'll be learning. Uh, and we definitely look forward to seeing the outcomes of this. And we will continue with the partnership, of course. And we would like to encourage um, as many people to apply and tap in. Um, Jasir is very intentional about supporting entrepreneurs. So apply and tap in because once you gain that knowledge, then you'll be able to cascade it to other entrepreneurs around it, around you and be able to, you know, grow the ecosystem further. So thank you very much. It was our pleasure to be on, on, the, on, the, on the call today during the launch. And uh, we celebrate you. We celebrate Jasir. We celebrate the applicants and we celebrate even the ones who've gone before and taken the journey with Jasiri. Thank you very much, Dr. Rose. Asante, Asante Sana. Thank you very much indeed, Madam Doreen. As our CEO, Anthony Farr said, complexity is simplified when we have collaborations, when we have amazing collaborators like yourselves. And we just thank you for taking the time for being here with us. I want to also recognize um, the other speakers that we had. We had um, Buana Steven Gugu, who I, uh, heads the Angel Network in Kenya and does amazing other things as you had in his bio. I want to thank you, Madam Esther Kunda from Rwanda. You have also been a supporter of the Jasiri Talent Investor, and now we are really excited to have your continued support and encouragement in the Jasiri Growth Accelerator. Ladies and gentlemen, business owners, business formulators, entrepreneurs, you are at the center of what we do. You are the reason we wake up early in the morning to serve none other than yourselves, give you this amazing opportunity and work with various players to ensure there is a conducive environment for you to flourish. We're very excited as the Alan and Jill Gray Philanthropies to be offering the yet another aspect of our, uh, our offerings within Eastern Africa through the Jasiri Growth Accelerator. Please take up this opportunity to grow yourselves. You are those that we are counting on to solve Africa's problems and provide those goods and services that society direly needs that we need to increase and improve the social and economic welfare of millions of people, not only in Eastern Africa, but the continent at large. And we're walking this journey with you to support you so you can do that which you're able to and actualize your dreams. As Stephen Gugu mentioned, it does not matter what sector you're in. And if you have an amazing idea in upcoming sectors, as COVID-19 has showed us, for example, increasingly the media sector, the entertainment sector in Eastern Africa, the creative industry, then go for it. So what is in your heart? Are you able to create a market innovating, a market, market creating innovation, or rather have you already come up with a concept and a business that is a market creating innovation, the Jasiri Growth Accelerator, as you've had, is it for you? We are encouraging innovations and ventures any part of the country, be it in Kenya, be it in Rwanda, we are encouraging you to come and join us, no matter where you are at, as you've had from Madam Esther and Madam Noreen. We are also very, very pleased to have heard this morning, today, that there is government commitment to continuously improve the regulatory sector so that indeed uh, those of you with high growth ventures can succeed and accelerate in your success as you serve society. We're counting on you to tell us where your pain points are. As one of us, Professor, or should I just say, Dr. Pumlani refers to and saying that when we know of your pain points, then we can effectively address them as we collectively create a conducive environment for you to flourish. Do that which you have had this morning, build a good and strong business that can stand continent wide and indeed improve and maximize on your skills to tell a good story. 
focusing on the matrices that um, venture capitalists and angels are looking forward to um, hearing so that um, they can support you. I want to continue to say that uh, we at Jasiri are unique and a unique part for you to consider joining because we have the Jasiri Alumni Network. When you join us, we're in for the long haul. You will be part of forming the community of peer-to-peer -peer conversations and support. And also we'll count on you to mentor others and share your stories. So with that, we are just here saying, we have patient capital for you. Welcome on board, be brave, be Jasiri, be a Jasiri company and come and join us in the Jasiri Growth Accelerator. With that, I would like to thank each and every one of you sincerely for being here with us today. I want to say a special thank you to each and every uh, talent uh, staff member of Jasiri. Thank you for your contribution. Thank you to our partners. Without you, we would not have gone far. Without you, we will not hit the skies as rapidly as we possibly would have had we not collaborated. We want to thank each and every entrepreneur on this call and each and every one of you who has been brave enough to create a high growth venture. All the very best and we look forward to seeing your application for the Jasiri Accelerator program. With that, Asante Nisana, Merci beaucoup. Thank you very much, Murakotsi Chane. Goodbye. Just leave it.